So good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this session. My name is Prakash Hiramani. I'm a senior product manager at Google. Uh, with me is Michael Galpin. He's a technical lead uh, for a very exciting product we're going to be announcing today. And uh, I'm also honored to have Jonathan Taylor, who's VP of Mobile at Priceline. And he's going to be talking about something very exciting, too. So um, we are very, uh, we're very happy because we were able to announce a great product for mobile commerce today called Google Wallet Instant Buy. And uh, as you'll see, it helps, it's going to help your users, consumers, uh, be able to buy physical goods and services in a much easier way. So before we get into the product details, we thought we should look at things in perspective. Uh, today, when we look at a rotary dial phone, uh, we laugh, especially when we have our nice, shiny Android devices uh, next to us. And uh, we believe that the state of mobile commerce today, uh, when, we, when we take a step back maybe in the future and look back to where we are today, that's how we uh, look at the state of m-commerce. So what is the state of m-commerce today? Uh, unfortunately, it's a very painful state. Uh, for many of you who have tried to make a purchase on your mobile device, uh, the average person goes through 24 steps, 24 plus steps, because you have to enter your billing information, and God forbid if your shipping information is different from your billing information, uh, you have to enter more keystrokes, and then not to mention that many sites require you to uh, set up a username and password, log in, and then you add all these steps up, you could easily have 100 keystrokes, friction, which leads to abandonment, which means you don't have high conversion rates. And one of the stats that's staggering is the purchase abandonment rate with mobile commerce. So 97%, 97% of users abandon a purchase midstream. Uh, and just to again take a step back, mobile commerce is growing at 100% year over year. So the question we ask ourselves is, how much more could this market be growing if we were able to reduce or eliminate this friction. And that's where Google Wallet and Buy comes in. So how are we addressing this pain point? So there's a couple of ways we're addressing this pain point. One is we want to have faster checkout for physical goods and services. So as many of you know, by virtue of having an Android phone, you have Android Play on it, the Android Play Store. And many of you have hopefully made a purchase on Android Play. By virtue of making that purchase, you've set up a Google Wallet. And now that you already have the Google Wallet set up, you can use that same wallet for making a purchase for physical goods and services, or for example, buying something on Priceline. So we reduce a one friction pain point, which is uh, removing the pain of entering your billing and payment information. The other pain point we covered was registration and login. And uh, I think many of you may have attended the G Plus sessions already. Uh, that's a great way to remove this pain point. Not only can you avoid the uh, users from having to set up a different username and password, uh, we can also share profile information so you can make it a more personalized experience when a user comes in to log in. Um, so speed is everything in m-commerce, and, and, and I think hopefully you're getting the message. If you do step one and two, you make checkout fast and easy, and it's all about speed when it comes to m-commerce. Uh, security is something that we are very passionate about, and uh, one, there's one uh, you know, traditional misconception out there that security and convenience are a zero-sum game. Uh, we think that's a false choice. We think you can raise the bar on both security and convenience, and we have done that with Google Wallet Instant Buy. So what are we doing about security? Uh, we're doing a couple of things. One is every time you make a purchase, we generate a one-time one virtual card. Uh, the other thing we do is we have a Google Wallet purchase protection program. So uh, your users, your consumers of your application have a peace of mind that uh, any uh, unauthorized purchase is something they don't need to worry about. And most importantly, we have risk-based authentication. So uh, when you have an Android device, you're already logged into the device. We don't ask you to enter a username and password, but we do have a very sophisticated risk engine that will challenge your user if it gets a risk signal. Uh, there's two other points which I'll just touch on, but Michael's going to cover in more detail, which relate around lightweight integration. And the reason for that is because uh, we, our integration is client to client, uh, so there's no back-end elongated server process. But you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, Jonathan and team and the other launch partners, uh, you can talk to them directly, and they'll talk about their experience. 
and finally, there, we don't charge any additional fees. Uh, if you use Google Wallet, you continue to use your existing payment processor. Uh, Google doesn't charge any additional fees on top of that. So how does the product work? So this is actually from our sample application. And um, uh, for those of you who will uh, use our SDK, you will also get the source code for the sample application. So the typical purchase process starts with the screen on the left. So I go to checkout, and um, I've chosen what I want to buy. It's a Canon. Um, I'm going to invoke the Buy with Google Wallet button. So typically, you would place the Buy with Google Wallet button at checkout. And when I do that, it brings up the middle screen that you see. It's what we call the chooser. This is the Google Wallet Instant Buy chooser. So I mentioned earlier to you all that if you've um, used Play, by virtue of using that, you've set up an account, a Google Wallet account. So let's say I set up a Google Wallet account and I had MasterCard as my funding instrument, or what we call um, your backing card. That's what's going to show up. That's the MasterCard you see uh, where it says Pay2. Uh, you can change it to another, another, another source if you want. It also has my shipping address below. So because it already got this from my Play account, I don't have to go through the friction or pain point of entering it again. I also want to draw your attention to the checkbox. Uh, this is what we call pre-authorization. This is very important because if your user checks this box and gives consent, next time when that same user comes back to your application, they can skip the screen. So it makes it a two-tap purchase process. Uh, once the chooser comes up, we, uh, after the user gives consent, we pass control back to your site, which is a screen on the right. Um, there you can, we also do what's called a masked wallet. So essentially we pass to you the last four digits of the funding instrument, which is the MasterCard ending in 5417, and the shipping address. And as far as you're concerned as a developer or merchant, it's as if the user had typed it in. Uh, when, when the user hits confirm order, then we pass what's called a full wallet, which has that one-time virtual MasterCard I talked about. And um, the beauty about this is you don't have to make any changes downstream from your payment processing perspective. What I mean by that is it's as if I had typed a MasterCard on your mobile commerce site. So again, it's very powerful because it goes back to lightweight integration. So uh, we thought it would be good if we could have Jonathan now demonstrate what I've been talking about and um, give a demo of Priceline and talk about his experience integrating with Instant Buy. Jonathan, over to you. Okay, Prakash, uh, thanks very much. We'll switch over to the Wolf. Um, well, at Priceline, we are all about bringing great travel deals to our customers, and we're especially interested in making it fast and easy for our customers to book a great hotel room at a great rate from their mobile device. Now, as Prakash mentioned, speed is everything. Speed always wins, and this is a very important differentiator for us. We want to make it as quick and easy to check out on Priceline with the Android app as we can. So we have teamed up with Google to introduce uh, full Google Wallet integration into our Android app. And I'll give you uh, an example of how that works. But first I'll say that it, a wise man once gave me some advice, which is, Jonathan, never do a live demo on a wireless network. <laughs> so with that advice, that sage advice in mind, we will do a live demo on a wireless network. <laughs> so let's imagine that I'm a brand new Priceline customer. I've just downloaded and installed the brand new Priceline app, which was just released today. Uh, from the Play Store, and I'll bring it up. And I had this idea that since we have this great spring weather here in the West Coast, I'll extend my vacation a little bit and book a great hotel room down the coast in Monterey this weekend. So we'll choose the hotel section from the Priceline app. Um, rather than San Francisco, we'll choose Monterey, which we've recently chosen. And we'll check in on Saturday the 18th and check out on the 19th. We'll choose one room and do a search for that. So let's see what's available in Monterey this weekend. The Priceline app is searching for all the available rooms and rates among all the available hotels in Monterey. And hopefully we'll have a result shortly. There we go. A couple of good choices there. I think we'll pick the Hyatt Regency Monterey. We can browse through the hotel amenities, look at some pictures. We can look at guest reviews um, and just get a general idea of what the hotel looks like.
And this is the normal um, checkout flow for hotel. And again, I'm a first time customer, so I have not yet uh, chosen my Google sign in or my Google wallet to method of payment. We may need to switch wireless networks. There we go. No, we didn't quite make it. Let me take this off for a second and we'll switch networks. Okay, almost there, and there we go. That looks a little bit better. Get orientation right. And we have the details on our selection, so we'll choose book now. We'll choose a great uh, room coming up here, a king bed. And we have a brand new option in our checkout options now, which is a sign-in with Google. So this is the Google single sign-on option. We'll choose sign-in with Google, and immediately we'll be asked to have the uh, app granted permission to a couple things in our Google profile, access to the wallet information and access to the basic profile information. We'll say OK for that, and what will happen is it will choose Google Wallet as our default method of payment now. And this is the regular Google Wallet payment selector, which Michael will talk about in a minute. And very importantly, we're going to choose the box that Prakash mentioned, which is to use Google Wallet to pay for future purchases. So the number of taps the next time through the application is greatly diminished. We'll say OK for that. And right away, we have our summary of charges. We have our payment method as Google Wallet is pre-selected. It's copied the uh, payment information and the billing information from the wallet. And we can go ahead and book now. So we've just done our first Priceline hotel booking using Google Wallet. Now the good news is that if I'm a repeat customer and I come back through the application a second time, the number of taps required to check out is even less because I've signed in with Google, which is sticky, and I've chosen Google Wallet as my default method of payment. So if I come back through the app and decide to book maybe another weekend in Monterey, I'll show you how much faster it is the second time, especially now that we have a great Wi-Fi network. <laughs> Again, we'll choose our hotel from the available hotels. Let's, um, let's try the Casa Munros. We'll say book now, and again, we'll choose our best rate available, or choose a, a room and rate combination that we like. We'll choose this um, clean room. And this time through, we go directly into Google Wallet because we're signed into Google. We've chosen Google Wallet as our method of payment. And immediately, we have our payment method selected. All we need to do is say, book now. We've made our second booking on Priceline, this time much faster. So we've greatly improved the checkout flow for Priceline yeah. customers. <laughs> Now, the good news is that the points of integration from the app to the Google Play services are pretty straightforward. And as Prakash mentioned, our payment backend systems are changed very little because we actually have a full-fledged card number to pass through to it. And Michael will talk a little bit more about the details of integration, but now I'll turn it back over to Prakash. Thank you, Jonathan. That was great. Uh, I should have mentioned this earlier, but if you see anything that excites you, feel free to applaud at any point in this presentation. <laughs> So uh, with that, I, you know, on the spirit of applause, I think uh, we need to applaud all our launch partners. We are very grateful. We have a great roster of partners who have launched Google Wallet Instant Buy. And just to make a shameless plug, we have a blog post that was released at noon. And uh, you will be able, to, uh, you'll be able to test those applications out. So the partners we have launched with today are Airbnb, Expedia, Fancy, Gigya, GoPago, uh, NFC Tax 10, Priceline, of course, Rulala, Booking.com, Tabbed Out, 
Uber, and Rap. What I'd really like to encourage everybody to do is download these apps and uh, experience the great M-Commerce experience yourself. Uh, so for example, if you haven't made uh, vacation plans for summer, I'd encourage you to try out Priceline and make a booking just like Jonathan did. Uh, we have a slew of other travel partners too. Uh, if you want to try a local San Francisco eatery, Bistro Burger, I'd encourage you to download GoPago, uh, install it, and order ahead. Uh, I'd also encourage you to, um, uh, when, you want, when you go to some of the uh, after-session uh, after festivities we have organized, to call Uber for a cab ride so you can um, drive home safely. Uh, the other uh, thing I want to emphasize is we have many of these partners in the Google Wallet sandbox area. So I'd really encourage everybody to show up there if you're interested in this product and talk to the developers and partners directly. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Michael, who's going to walk you through the rest of the presentation. Thanks, Prakash. <clears throat> no more demos, I swear. <laughs> um, it's really humbling to see the list of, uh, of partners out there, uh, a lot of great apps uh, using our software. Uh, hopefully, after you, you know, saw the, the price line demo, you'll agree it's a great experience for your customers. But you guys are developers. Uh, you guys want to know how all this works. So let's, uh, let's take a look. So this is sort of the, the instant buy flow. And you'll notice there's a, there's a fork at the top of this uh, sort of flow chart here. And that corresponds to the you know, first time versus subsequent times a user uses instant buy in your application. Um, there's four steps involved. Uh, the first is getting a mask wallet. Um, as a Prakash mentioned earlier, a mask wallet is just a description of the uh, payment instrument the user is going to use for the transaction. So it's usually something like MasterCard, uh, 1234, so the last four digits. Just enough information for the user to identify the instrument, uh, but it's not the full 16 digits to it. Um, and it also uh, includes a shipping address. Um, so you want to get a mask wallet. Um, the first time a user uses Instant Buy with your application, you're going to need to show the Instant Buy UI. Um, so that's sort of the, the right side of the fork here. Um, that's the chooser UI uh, that you saw earlier. It shows the payment instruments the user has. So if they've uh, bought something on uh, Google Play, maybe they bought an, bought an app, they'll see the credit card there. If they've bought a Nexus 7, uh, they'll see the shipping address that they shipped it to will be listed there. Um, so they can select uh, what they want to use there. Uh, then you'll be given uh, the mask wallet data. And with that, you want to update your UI. Um, the first thing you probably want to do is uh, calculate sales tax, uh, calculate shipping costs, and show that to your user. Uh, you'll probably also want to show the mask wallet information to the user so they know, um, OK, it's this card that's going to get charged. Is this address where things are going to be sent? Um, once they're happy with it, uh, then they can confirm the transaction, and that's when you'll get a full wallet. The, the full wallet is just like the mask wallet, uh, but it also includes this generated uh, virtual card that you can then turn around, uh, send to your backend systems for payment processing. So we'll go into some more detail on these steps here. Um, I was really hoping Jonathan would give us the source code to Priceline, and we could kind of look at some of that. Um, but instead, we'll have to settle for our sample app. Uh, as Prakash mentioned earlier, it's a, a sample application. All the source code uh, comes with the SDK, uh, so you guys can take a look at it. Um, on this screen, the only, only thing you see going on is this uh, Buy with Google button. Um, it's important for your users to see that. It lets them know, hey, I'm, I'm going to use Google uh, to complete this purchase. Uh, it's very reassuring uh, to them. But behind the scenes, there's even more going on. Uh, behind the scenes, the application is establishing a connection to Instant Buy. Now, that sounds kind of strange, so maybe you might want to know what's going on with that. Well, to understand that, let's look at the Instant Buy architecture. Instant Buy is a component of Google Play services. Uh, you might have heard about Google Play services uh, earlier today in the keynote. Um, it's been out for almost a year, so you might have actually already be using it. Uh, it's uh, pushed to all Android devices uh, running Froyo or higher. Uh, that includes all those gingerbread devices. Um, and to have the Play Store. Uh, to integrate with Instant Buy, all you have to do is uh, compile in the Play Services client library into your application. Uh, that client library is a very thin uh, client library. Um, the bulk of the code is, is part of the Play Services APK, which runs in a separate process. 
And it's because it's running in a separate process is why you have to create this connection between your application and the play services process. So creating that connection, uh, it's pretty straightforward. First, you want to create an instance of a wallet client. Uh, this is really the main entry point into Instant Buy. It's the object that has all the APIs you're going to use. Uh, creating one is uh, it's pretty straightforward. You pass in an activity to it. Uh, you pass in a constant saying what environment. Um, we have a test environment we call Sandbox, uh, where you can use fake credit card numbers so you can test out your integration without actually having to spend money. Uh, you can specify an account uh, that ties into single, uh, single sign-on, which we uh, mentioned earlier, and I'll go into more detail soon. And a couple of callbacks. Uh, the first is this connection callback, uh, which is going to receive lifecycle events uh, for your connection to the Play Services APK. So it's going to see, re receive events like uh, on connected or on disconnected. And finally, there's a failure listener. If for some reason you can't establish the connection, uh, that listener gets notified of that. Once you've created an instance of the wallet client, then you just call connect. Uh, that's an asynchronous call, just like all the other uh, APIs in Instant Buy. So now you're ready to get a mask wallet. There's a few things you need to figure out um, before you request a mask wallet. Uh, do you need a full billing address? Uh, do you need a shipping address? Do you need the user's phone number? We really wanted to make Instant Buy fit in with your existing checkout flow. So if you ask for a full billing address, then you tell Instant Buy you need a full billing address. If you only ask for a minimal billing address, so basically just the zip code of their, of their billing address, uh, then you can tell Instant Buy that, and that's all we'll ask the user for as well. Um, so once you have all these, uh, all these things figured out, then you're ready to, to create a request for a mask wallet. So when you want to do that is when your connection callbacks on connected method uh, gets invoked. That tells you that the connection has been established with Instant Buy and it's safe to call other APIs. So to build your mask wallet request, uh, we have a, a very convenient builder you can use. And this is just where you set all the options. Like here I'm saying I need a, I need a shipping address. Um, and once you set your options, you call build and you've got a request ready to go. You take that request and you call the load mask wallet method on the wallet client. Uh, you also pass a listener to this. Uh, this API, as I mentioned, like all the others, it's asynchronous. Uh, so you pass a listener that gets invoked once the data is returned back from Google. At this point, uh, the first time your users use Instant Buy in your application, you'll need to show the Instant Buy UI. Uh, you're going to get a, a call back here that will receive a connection result. If you happen to have used any of the other parts of uh, Google Play services, the connection result object should be uh, familiar to you already, uh, as it's used through all the different components. Um, it basically has a success or failure method. And in our case, success means you've got data as a response to the request you made, and there's no UI to show. So that corresponds to the pre-authorization case uh, for the subsequent times a user uses Instant Buy in your application. Uh, failure, while that sounds kind of harsh, uh, it just means that we couldn't return the data to you yet, and you need to show the Instant Buy UI. To show the Instant Buy UI, uh, we rely on the uh, start activity for result, on activity result paradigm that's used, uh, it's very common in Android development. Okay, to show the uh, Instant Buy UI, you, uh, the listener you passed to uh, load mask wallet uh, has an on, uh, on mask wallet loaded method that will get invoked. It gets passed a, a connection result and a mask wallet. So you check if it, was a, if it was a success or not. If it was a success, then you got, you got data back uh, from Instant Buy. And now you're ready to update your, your UI with the mask wallet data. If it wasn't a success, if it was a failure, uh, then it needs resolution. Uh, that means you need to show the Instant Buy UI. Uh, typically, you'll probably want to put that behind a button, probably that, uh, that Buy with Google button. Uh, so that's what we did in, in, in this case. We created a button, and when it gets clicked, uh, then we call the start resolution for result uh, method on connection result. As I mentioned, uh, connection result um, is actually uh, used throughout uh, Play Services. And when there is resolution, it's basically wrapping a pending intent behind it. So it's turning around and calling start activity for result using that pending intent. Uh, so just like uh, anything else, when you use that, the on activity, uh, start activity for result paradigm, uh, your activities on activity result method will be called 
once the instant by UI has been dismissed. So if everything went smoothly, uh, you'll get a result OK. Uh, this is the, the standard um, result you'd see in, uh, um, in Android development. Um, in that case, uh, you can pull the mask wallet data out of the intent passed to on activity result. And then you're ready to update your UI. If there was a problem, uh, like say there was a network connection issue, um, then you can pull an error code out. Uh, we have a list of error codes uh, in our documentation uh, so that you, you know what each of these error codes mean and you can decide how to, uh, how to deal with it in your application. So now that you've got the mask wallet data, you're ready to use it. Uh, you're ready to uh, update your UI. Um, so you want to calculate sales tax and shipping, uh, update the totals for the transactions so your user sees how much you're going to pay. Uh, you want to show the, the uh, mask wallet information, so the, uh, the description of the payment instrument that's going to get charged for this transaction, uh, and the address things are going to get shipped to. And you should give the users a chance to change this in case they made a mistake. Um, Finally, you'll provide a confirmation button so once the, uh, once the user is happy with their choices, uh, they can confirm the order. When they confirm the order, that's when you're ready to get a full wallet. Uh, so to, to get a full wallet, it's very similar to getting a mask wallet. Uh, first, you build a full wallet request. One thing I want to note here is uh, setting the uh, Google transaction ID. Uh, that's an ID that you're going to get in the mask wallet that gets returned to you. And it lets us tie together this full wallet request to the mask wallet we sent earlier so we know which card to charge. Um, you can set some other um, options like a total price, um, line items in the cart, and then you can build your request. And then you'll pass that to load full wallet, another API on wallet client. And just like with a load mask wallet, you'll pass a listener to that as well. Uh, that listener will have a, a single method for you to implement. Um, on full wallet loaded, and it, it follows a very similar pattern to we saw um, on mass wallet loaded. You get a connection result passed to you and a full wallet object. Uh, you check if the result was a success, in which case the full wallet object passed to you will not be null, and you can use it um, to send to your back end. Uh, there is a chance that it could require resolution and was not a success. Um, this would happen if uh, for some reason we thought there was something fraudulent about the transaction, and we wanted to challenge the user to confirm their identity. Um, so in that case, you do a start resolution for result, just like you did with the, with the uh, mask wallet request. At this point, you're now accepting Google Wallet. Um, so we'll just go over um, the, the steps again real quick. Uh, the first thing you want to do is to get a mask wallet. Um, that is a description of the payment instrument that's going to be charged for the user, so something like MasterCard uh, 1234 plus their shipping address. Um, you need to be ready to show the Instant Buy UI. So the first time a user uses Instant Buy in your application, uh, they'll, need, they'll need to show the Instant Buy UI so they can um, you know, pick what card they want to use, uh, pick which address, they can change these things, and that's where they get the option to use Google Wallet as their default payment method for future transactions. Finally, once the user is happy with things and they've confirmed they want to proceed with a transaction, that's when you get a full wallet. Before moving on and uh, talking about single sign-on and security, I want to mention there's a, a few more um, instant buy sessions uh, at I.O. this week. Uh, later today, there's a session called uh, Building Compelling E-Commerce Experiences on Android. That's being given by uh, two of the engineers on the instant buy team, uh, plus an engineer from the fancy. So I really uh, recommend you, you attend that. Um, they've got a lot of great tips, even some tips that aren't necessarily uh, particular to e-commerce, but for Android applications in general. Uh, finally, to really get into the details of Instant Buy, uh, we have a code lab on Friday. Um, in the code lab, you'll get a chance to integrate Instant Buy into an existing application. Um, uh, myself and several other Instant Buy engineers will be uh, TAs for the code lab, so I hope to see you then. Okay, so we've kind of talked about uh, the faster checkout part and how that gets implemented. Uh, we want to go back to uh, uh, single sign-on, eliminating registration and login for your users. On here you see a couple screenshots from the Fancy. Um, There's an app you might have uh, seen from the keynote this morning. On the screen on the left, um, you see uh, the Fancy with a couple of sign-in options here. 
Uh, the top one is a sign-in with Google. There's a couple other buttons on there I'm not as familiar with. Um, I'm sure your users will hit that big, beautiful red button at the top, though. And then they'll get the screen on the right. Um, they're already signed in to their Android device, so they don't have to enter in a name and password to sign in with Google. Uh, instead, they just have to authorize your application uh, to use Google. But wait, there's more. Once you have uh, sign in with Google+, uh, there's some extra benefits you get from this. And one of those is uh, social sharing. Um, so on these screens, on the, on the far left, um, I'm posting to my G Plus account about a shaved ice machine I bought on the fancy. I really love shaved ice. Um, and who doesn't? In fact, that's what I wrote in the post. Um, the middle screen is how the post will appear to my friends when they see it on G Plus. Uh, so they can you know, see my, my comment about it. They can see a description and a picture. But most importantly, they see a buy button. Uh, right there on G+. If they press that Buy button and they already have the Fancy on their device, they'll be taken directly to the shaved ice machine um, listing in the Fancy. And there they'll have the Buy Now option uh, with Google Wallet. And they'll go into the chooser and they'll be able to complete the transaction very quickly as we've seen. If they don't have uh, the Fancy installed, they'll be taken to the Play Store where they get a chance to, uh, to download the Fancy. Um, <clears throat> So with, uh, with social sharing, you can really drive uh, downloads of your application and engagement, and with Instant Buy, turn all that into conversions. Uh, tomorrow, there's a uh, Google Plus sign-in for an Android developer session uh, that goes into a lot more detail on how Google Plus sign-in works. OK, I know earlier Prakash mentioned uh, security and how uh, Instant Buy makes things more secure. And I'm sure all the developers in the room were shaking their heads going, I don't trust a product manager talking about security. Um, but he was telling the truth. Let me, let me explain. So Instant Buy is easier and more secure. And we've seen the easier parts already. How is it more secure? Well, we don't actually share uh, the full credit card information with anybody. Uh, consumers are always hearing about some big corporations uh, leaking user data, including credit cards. Um, and so you can't blame them if they have a lot of anxiety um, about sharing their credit card information with some app they just down downloaded. Uh, so we can eliminate that anxiety. They don't have to share their full information. Uh, they've already got their information with Google, you know, they, so they can, they can just leverage that. Further, the credit cards that we generate um, have a, a limit on them that is closely tied to the amount specified in the full wallet request. So once they've been used for a transaction, there's not much money left on the cards. So even if they were compromised in some way, uh, there's not much damage can be done. Um, further, they have an expiration date that is closely tied to when the card was issued. So there's really only a small window where any problems could happen. Now, you guys might be wondering, um, is that going to cause some complications for us, um, you know, these generated virtual cards? Uh, but the answer is no. The card we give you is a MasterCard, uh, just like any other MasterCard, um, so you can charge it just like you would if the, if the user had entered it by hand. Every transaction on, um, made with Instant Buy is also backed by the Google Risk Engine, uh, because uh, data leakage is not the only thing users have to worry about. Um, crunching big numbers is something that Google is very good at, and we use that capability to analyze each transaction and challenge if we need to. We're so confident uh, in our ability to detect, uh, detect fraud, we offer the Google Wallet Purchase Protection. So any purchases made using Instant Buy um, are guaranteed for 180 days after the purchase. So again, just to remove even more anxiety uh, for your users and help them feel better about making purchases. OK, um, I want to wrap up now and uh, turn things back over to Prakash. He can tell you how you can get access to Instant Buy. Thank you, Michael. So uh, just want to recap what we talked about earlier today. We talked about fast and easy checkout. One thing I should mention is uh, we commissioned Mercator Advisory Group, which is an independent payments and consulting firm. And uh, they said when compared to other digital wallets and when compared to credit cards, Google Wallet Instant Buy was the fastest and easiest way to check out on native Android apps. Um, so we talked about skipping registration and sign in with G+. Uh, Michael talked about security, kept me honest. Uh, and then we talked about lightweight integration and um, the fact that we don't charge any additional fees. So 
I think many of you are thinking now, um, uh, I'm interested in this product. How do I sign up? What's next? So this product is in limited availability. Uh, if you are interested, what we would encourage you to do is complete the interest form. Uh, the link is here. We'll also be in the office hours section right after this uh, to address any questions you have. Uh, if you fill out the interest form, we'll get back to you very promptly. And um, finally, I want to emphasize that only sign up if you're selling physical goods and services on Android. So uh, we'll turn it over to Q&A, but one more thing. Uh, you've been a great audience. And um, when I see around, I see many familiar faces. Uh, you have, many of you have been um, uh, dedicated partners, integrated with Google Wallet Instant Buy. So we really feel we should reward you. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Peter Hazelhurst, who's Director of Product Management. And uh... Hi. Thanks a lot, Prakash. Awesome demos, guys. Fantastic. Um, so some of you may have caught the fact that uh, we sort of stealthily announced uh, a new product uh, at about noon today. And that product is the ability to send money in Gmail. And one of the really awesome things about it is all you do is, as long as you have a wallet, you just click the attach money button, attach money like you would attach a photo, and off the email goes to the recipient. If the recipient doesn't have a wallet, we automatically help them through the sign-up process. They get a wallet, they receive their funds, everything's done and dusted. It's really, really simple, and it's just what you expect from us in terms of our integration with Gmail, our simplicity of the wallet, and a great user story. So we thought really hard about how do we grow this system and get people using it. And instead of the traditional blast it out and everybody gets it, we're doing something a little special. We're going to make this a viral launch. And the way the virality works is if you have money, you can send money. And that seems rather stingy if you guys don't have money. So uh, I went to uh, my bank account and figured out a way to send all of you $10. So in plus or minus a few minutes from now, you should receive an email from me saying, welcome to send money with Gmail. And 10 bucks is in your Google Wallet. And if you don't have one, go get one. And then if you're watching on the live stream and you want access to send money in Gmail, please find one of your friends here that's at uh, Google I.O. <laughs> uh, because that's the only way you get it. So please help us grow the business and uh, look forward to sharing and sending money across the net. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. So uh, we'd like to open the floor for question and answers. And I just want to, uh, just a housekeeping note. I know it's less than two minutes to go, but we don't want to cut this discussion short. So uh, like I said earlier, right after this presentation, Michael and I will be at the office hours section in the sandbox. But why don't we take a few questions in the remaining time we have? Go ahead, please. Please go to the uh, actually, yes, uh, yeah, please go to the microphone because this is being live streamed. So uh, we want everybody on the live stream to be able to listen to the question. So uh, I'll, I'll go because I'm at the mic. Uh, Jeff from Opera. You, earlier, uh, congratulations on how far this has come and how much easier it is for publishers and e-commerce players to integrate. Um, earlier in the keynote, you talked about an HTML5 spec for autocomplete on wallet uh, in Chrome and all that. How do the two products fit together? Could you speak to that? Okay. Uh, so the, the, the product shown in the keynote, uh, auto checkout, uh, is for web pages, a uh, way to uh, fill, form, fill out these uh, uh, long payment forms on web pages. Uh, this is for uh, native Android applications. Quick question. Um, sorry. Um, you said you only have it available for products and services. When will it be available for like content sites, like uh, documents or videos or images that you want to sell online? OK, so if I heard the question correctly, if you're selling digital goods and services, we have a great product already, Android and app billing. So I'd encourage you to use Android and app billing if you're selling a product which involves digital goods that are consumed on or off the device. Okay. Quick question here. Um, is there any geographic limitations as far as uh, you know, support for other currencies and countries yet? Yeah, great question. Actually, this product we should have mentioned before is uh, we are focused on the US right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, we, we do plan to expand in the future, but for now, the main, the main focus is the U.S. So you need to be a U.S. seller and a U.S. merchant. I see. The second question is around the funding source. Uh, you refer to you know, using a credit card to back a credit card transaction. Right. Um, how about you know, other funding, funding source like uh, a debit account or a PayPal account or something along those lines? Sure. So today we support credit cards. Okay. 
from all the major network brands as a mm -hmm. funding source. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't support uh, links to your bank account today. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, hi. I have a question, a few questions actually. The first one, chargebacks. How do you handle them? That, like, do, do I, as a developer, right. get chargebacks? It's a great question, and I'm glad you asked that because uh, this goes back to what we said that we have minimum uh, impacts to your downstream processing. You, as a developer or merchant, would handle that chargeback exactly the way you handle a MasterCard chargeback today. So it's as if, if I had entered my MasterCard number on your site, and if it was disputed, you'd follow the exact same process. No changes. Okay. And uh, how about if I wanted to use in my app other uh, forms, say if I wanted to use PayPal and Google Wallet, uh, would I, am I allowed to do that? So uh, we have our UI branding guidelines. Um, we, we know we, again, it's uh, consumer choice and merchant choice, uh, but yeah, we can, uh, you can use other payment methods, but uh, uh, we'd encourage you to look at Google Wallet Instant Buy and the SDK and then make an informed decision. Okay, thanks. So we'll take, uh any more questions out at the uh, sandbox during office hours? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.